And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for another Shadow Isles Sharima deck. We're going to be playing Thresh Gnosis. This one is a viewer submitted deck list. This was a donation deck that looks real interesting. Basically, Thresh and Gnosis work well together. So Thresh needs you to see, uh, it like Thresh needs to be in play and see six units die to level up. Of course, if that's not too difficult to do to do because like like if we're playing a gnosis deck we want to slay a bunch of units and so slaying units is going to be killing them having them die whether it's on our side or our opponent's side we just need six total for thresh to level up so let's um let's see what we got here so we're going to have uh, a lot of things to sacrifice we're gonna have warden's prey dune keeper fading icon is going to be creating a prey um, we're even going to have the undying so lots of good things to sacrifice as far as our cards that do sacrifice, we have Blight of Caretaker, Glimpse Beyond, uh, Spirit Leech, all being able to kill our own allies um, for profit. Even Right of Calling. So I've been pretty happy with Right of Calling. We're playing this over Ravenous Butcher, it looks like, to kill an ally or destroy one of your mana gems to draw a champion. So we can go find our champions. So we should have lots of ways to be able to kill um, our own allies. And as far as we can even kill our enemies as well, we got Spirit Fire in here against all these aggro decks. Um, Grass the Undying, and some cool top end stuff as well. Uh, but these two work really well together because so if we if we are able to level up Thresh and we can attack with a leveled up Thresh, then it's going to put in Nasus into play. And Nasus doesn't have like a, a playability; it will still get the plus one plus one for whatever has been slain this game. So we can put in a really really large Nasus with Thresh. We're trying out one Spirit Journey in here. This is a new card that we haven't really tried that much, but this could be pretty cool. Like if we have, if we do have a level, like probably the best case scenario is we have a leveled up Thresh and we attacked with it and we put a Gnosis into play. We can Spirit Journey it, kill it, revive it, and now it will be attacking for the first time again. So now we'll be able to attack again and put in another Gnosis. That could be pretty cool. But then it can also just do like a whole bunch of other stuff just throughout the game. It's just a, a versatile card. It'll be interesting to really see how that, that card plays out. And uh, Rampaging Bakai, I think this this one could be a pretty cool one to uh, try out also. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, Bakai, or not. But anyway, let's get to some games. Let's try out some Thresh Gnosis. Let's see how it does. Oh, wow. We got a mirror match to start off with. We got a mirror match. Okay, I kind of like everything in our hand. The Rekindler, obviously, is super slow, but I could feel like Rekindler being really important in this matchup if it's going to be a real grindy matchup. Um, so I'll just keep the rest of these. I could see, I could honestly see Mulliganing the Fading Icon. Now that we drew the Chronomancer, I definitely wish we would have Mulliganed the Fading Icon, but I could see doing that. I could see just like the one help, you know, like the 3 1, you know, like them playing, you know, whatever, and the 3 1 not really getting through and stuff. Sure, you want to kill my own one? Go ahead. Always forward. Spears ready. They get an extra slay, but I don't have my Chronomancer be vulnerable. Plus, Chronomancer is like better later, right? Like whenever we have less cards that we... Um that you know like we can this predict the longer you wait for predict the more value it will be because because drawing a specific card on turn three when you have a ton of other cards in hand not very valuable drawing a specific card on turn eight when you like are just in top deck mode that is very valuable I could see saving the three spell mana for vengeance instead of playing the Chronomancer. Mm. 
Hmm. I really want to thresh. It's between these two. I'm worried about like glimpse beyond like them like if we try glimpse beyonding the undying and they respond and destroy my the undying. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. I'm a little worried about that. I'm gonna just take the care the blighted caretaker. Really? Which is always good. Where are you? What's that noise? I could see them playing Thresh this turn. I kind of want to have this thing for Thresh. Yep. Because Thresh was really the card that I was looking for also. Whenever I played that, I was looking for Thresh. Here's not bad. Bakai. But fate is mutable. Alright, rampaging Bakai. We figured it out. Would you look at this place? May take out both their fearsome blockers. Ugh. Gross. That's gonna be five out of six for Thresh now. Gross. That's what I was worried about with Glimpse Beyond. Previously, that's why I took the caretaker over it originally. Man, I don't want any of these. I mean, it, Spirit Fire kills a bunch of stuff, I guess. I guess it kills Thresh too, but. I can't attack, so if I attack, then, then they get to block and Thresh levels up. Okay, so they weren't they weren't able to level up their Thresh first. Some spirits are fated to burn. Oh, there's a skip option on Predict? I did not know that. Okay, so people in... Chatter saying there's a skip option. Because it says pick a card from among three in your deck. I didn't realize that means you can skip it. You know, it doesn't sound like... When it says pick a card, it doesn't sound like, hey, if you want, you don't have to pick anything. That's cool. I just didn't even realize that was an option. Okay, so the Threshes are leveled up. Right now they'll have three, you know, they have nine mana still, but right now they'd have three Spiderlings at the end of the turn. They'd still be blockers. That's too bad. We are about to get five additional um, slays for that thing. It was going to be a 12 12. Um, we obviously have a much, much better board than them. We have two cards there, three. So, like, we're. 
We're in a fine position right now. That spirit fire did a lot of work. Went in. Pride was my end, as it will be yours. Cool. Real glad not another thresh right there. No, get out of here. And this is this is the perfect spot for Rite of Negation where I get to just play it and kill the um, the Undying. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean the Sand Spinner is a good quality card too. Oh come on, I don't have another counter. What is this? That's another one? Wow. They had two also. Well, this is probably really, really bad for me. This could be game over. They're going to get huge Gnosis now. Is this like a bug or something? Why is that still chilling here? Alright, how big is this thing? Twelve. Oh, never mind. It turns into 15. So I have to block with this to stay alive. Oh, no, no, because it'll turn into 15 after damage, right? Oh, right, it doesn't have Overwhelm. I was thinking, like, this card has Overwhelm. It doesn't have Overwhelm. Okay, right, okay, okay, we're, we're still in there. Right, it's Fearsome, not Overwhelm. Okay. I'm not completely dead, but pretty dead. Not completely dead. I think I just block. I think I just attack with this Warden's Prey. Let's try to get something else. Alright, so it's two for Thresh. Thresh won't die quite yet to their Thresh. Yay, Gnosis. Yay, Gnosis. So their Gnosis is going to be a lot larger than mine, but theirs will have damage on theirs also. So yeah, because it'll be a 1913, mine will just be a 1616. This is three things dying for Thresh. I walk through the ages. The pesky specter will level up the thresh. When something dies to it being ephemeral, that doesn't count as you slaying a card. Right? I wouldn't think so. So I imagine this Gnosis is still gonna be a 1516. We have drawn very well since that since their double right of negation. We drew champion, champion. Okay, what I said wasn't true. Okay, I thought I thought what I said is what you just said. Destroying the mana gem is the safer play.
Okay, so either way, it, okay, so it doesn't slay either way. Okay. All right, so we know that way it doesn't count. Oh wait, Nasa should be last. All right, another Gnosis, and an, and another good draw for us with the Glimpse Beyond. We stand in the footprints of paths long trodden. Enough. Oh, come on. They just top decked Atrocity? Dang. Well, that's a really disappointing end to a cool game. It's a card we're not playing, Atrocity. Thank you, puppy. Okay, so yeah, the slay keyword says ephemerals don't count, right? So, okay, that clears that up. I mean, this 7-drop could be pretty nice, killing a Trundle or something later. Um, yeah, I kind of want to keep it. I kind of want to keep it. Let's actually get rid of maybe the Caretaker. Caretaker just doesn't seem that necessary in this matchup. Um, even though I do like how Caretaker kills the Undying, but probably don't need it. What does he want from me? Maybe keeping a 7-mana card is not advisable at any time. Why are we running Atrocity? I don't know. They're, we talked about that, um, but the, basically, like, the, um, the person that made the deck was kind of, you know, half and half on, like, Atrocity or Ether or this card right here, the, the Ether Fiends, and decided, decided to go with the new card with the Ether Fiend, but yeah, I could definitely see it playing Atrocity over really either of these seven drops. Because um, Atrocity works with the Undying as well. We want to save Pesky Spectre for Thresh. Even though Pesky Spectre would... It would... Put two pe Pesky Spectres in their deck. That's a really nice combo, though. Spirit Leech, the Undying. So their their turn like they have the turn five things right like so they their turn five is probably going to be their trundle or the the frozen thrall five drop right like that's what they want to do is those those things. Um, so I think I'm going to play stuff before combat. Ooh, right in negate. So it's either thresh or right in negation. Gosh, actually all these are pretty good. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you can skip over here. Um, right of Negation is pretty awesome in this matchup. I think I'm going to take that. I mean, gosh, with Thresh. Thresh is so cool, too, though. I think I'm going to take this Right of Negation. Can always rely on you to keep us safe. Leech will not draw both cards. The, whatever you choose, the rest of them get uh, shuffled randomly. Okay. So it was Trundle. If it was the other one, I would have been playing the Doomkeeper and attacking and getting damage on it. Or the Bakai. Bakai? Or the Bakai. Whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, we need to slay four units. How, how am I slaying four units? If I play Gnosis right now, I do not have Ride Negation Protection. But if they kill Gnosis, I have Rekindler anyway. There's just nothing else to do. Like, I don't want to play this thing yet. I don't want to play... I, I just I have nothing else to do. I like getting a vengeance out of their hand. You know, getting a vengeance out of their hands is really good for my Ether Fiend. It can be undone. They look angry. All 
Alright, so it's slaying a second thing. I'm gonna wait till next turn with this Ether Fiend to have Ride right Negation also with it. But we'll force them to have Troll Chant. Maybe they don't. Entomb. Whoa. They didn't even just get the Fury of the North. They went in Tomb. Well. Well, that's easy. So it looks like Rite Indigation is kind of... Uh, it's kind of bugged. Deal two to everything. Countdown one. I don't know if I play anything. I mean, I guess... Okay, so I play this. Maybe I just play this for Kindler. They're not going to be able to kill the Gnosis yet. Yeah, I guess I just play this. I can see playing the Doomkeeper first. I just have nothing to do. We got this Undying that's chilling. It's always cold in the Freljord. I assume that it was the deal two damage to everything. Yeah. You can fix it with the eye. Try that out here in a second. See what we see. Why does everybody have atrocity? Okay, so now I use the ice and maybe that that goes away. Definitely feels like they have another like they probably just have two atrocities in hand and that's like their plan, right? I can't, I can't kill the Undying to stop that. Um, I guess I'll, I'll just get rid of a Mana Gem, because it's just going to come right back. Uh, well, because I want to kill my own allies. They are going to have like a one Mana... Because I want to kill my own allies because I want to slay stuff. That's not going to bother us too much. Alright, 
All right, use the eye. Get rid of that other stuff. Okay. And so all this stuff's gonna die. I will click okay. I'd like to glimpse beyond this, please. attack. There we go. Awesome. One and one. We grow wiser with each victory. GG's. Hey, Jack. Yeah, we got some Thresh Gnosis. All right, playing some aggro. That this is where we can struggle more for sure. <laughs> this rekindler, uh, yeah, too slow. Rekindler, yeah, too slow. And I, I think we just mulligan the undying also against aggro, because it doesn't really help. See what we see. They should see what we see. Ooh. No one drop for misfortune gangplank. They usually play like nine one drops. Um, cool. I, hmm, I guess we play this. Yeah, I guess so. The thing about, like, not playing the two drop is that if I don't play the two drop, then I can have Grass the Undying next turn. So, like, if their plan is, like, Misfortune, I, or, you know, like, I could have Grass the Undying this turn. But playing it, so I could go, so if we Caretaker the Prey, we're looking at attacking for 6, 8, 11, which is a lot. We're not, like, really an aggressive deck, but we can get aggressive. The Problem with playing the Caretaker this turn is that I have absolutely nothing for next turn. Instead, I could just attack for five, save my three spell mana so that we have Grass the Undying next turn. Which may be better. I'm not sure if, like, we... I'm not sure if, like, that six mana really matters for us winning Death's Hand. I wouldn't just pass, because... I mean, I guess that'd be an option, but they would be able to pretty freely pass, and I think we'd want to get the attack. The Alright, spray fin, so probably Death's Hand and Let's go this. Death's Hand and Ravenous Flock are probably gonna be the, the spells they're playing. Yeah, Golden Talia is going to be Golden Ambassador Talia. It's, so Talia is the only champion, and he'll have like Golden Ambassador be able to draw Talia and everything. Yeah, similar to with Aphelios. We're not playing Aphelios. I could see just passing here. Have them waste three mana. Because what I'm worried about is I'm worried about making this attack, and then they play Gangplank afterwards, right? Like, that's what I'm worried about. I kind of like them not playing Gangplank this turn. Not playing a 5-drop. And this is, the Spray Fin isn't too scary when I'm playing Spirit Fire. Yep, that was definitely their plan, as you can tell. I have my orders. So... I think Spirit Fire it is. I'm, I'm going to take some damage, though. What am I going to want? I guess they're probably going to be playing like Deathmate and stuff. Do I want Pact of Negation? Or Vengeance to kill another... Maybe Vengeance? We can always rely kill another Gangplank, Jack the Winner. 8 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. Alright, so I'm playing this card. 
And then I guess I block with the Thresh. Blocking with the Thresh just makes it so, like, a they could kill Thresh with a Fervor, but a fer that's a Fervor not dealing damage to me. Um, if I block here, we... I guess it's only it's only two damage. I was going to say, like, that we, we want to save our damage, our health, but it's only two, because this thing's now only three power. So that's not that much. So let's go and block here. I'd rather keep Thresh large and in charge. And I guess that does help level Thresh up. I wish there was a way that we could we could check how many things we've slayed. Oh, they they gave up. Okay, so it looked like it was five. I could check I had the the Buckeye in hand that I could that we could check. So Gnosis was gonna be a seven seven. Alright, back to Lissandra Trundle again. This one worked out well for us last time. We had a solid hand. We had double Rite of Negation. That was clutch. Alright, Caretaker gone. And keep the rest. Looks like we'll have the turn two Chronomancer. And I want Rite of Negation. Spirit Leech is awesome, but we don't really have, like, a great Spirit Leech hand currently, and we already got one in hand. I would have liked the Undying. That was probably, like, the card that, you know, if I could have chose a card, I would have chose the Undying to grab right there. Um, the uh, is, question is, is Lissandra better with Shadow Isles or Shirima? I think it's it's just too early to say like what stuff is better than or not, right? Like it's we're still trying to figure like everybody's like still trying to figure out what the metagame looks like, everything like that, and that's gonna that always is an important factor. Um, so it's it's kind of too early to tell, honestly. It, and so some of that could be just a personal preference of what you want to do. I have been very impressed with. I was very impressed with Lissandra with Noxus and Swain. Uh, yesterday that we played, I liked that a lot, but. The Shadow Isles Lissandra decks have definitely been looking good. Alright, so we got the Undying. It was right on my tail. So if they're playing Babbling Bjerg, that's probably Ledros. Because it's neither their champions, so it's some non champion they just drew, and so my guess is Ledros. So we're probably going to get Ledros Atrocityed. May need this right of negation for that. But yeah, as far as like what's like best and stuff, like it's just it's too early. We're still experimenting, and it's all about learning the cards and learning what the format's going to be like. Okay, there we go. So you said Tarek and Zoe are indeed ascended. Do you think? Do you think is that something that you think they may update in this game? Are they going to have more ascended champions for that Shurima card, or is it just, um, it's it, yeah, basically, is that going to be in this game at all? Do you think? Okay. Probably going to be going with the Spirit Leech, killing the Undying this turn. I don't really know exactly why I didn't challenge anything with Thresh. Makes it more likely my Thresh can stay alive, I suppose. What do you think of concurrent timelines in an Invoke deck? I think that could be really cool. Yeah, it gets Solari Priestess, Spacey Sketcher, make them... Yeah, makes especially like Solari Priestess, Lunari Priestess, make those things bigger. Yeah, like there's so many good units in Targon but that are small, but they got great enter effects. 
So I, I think that could work really well. I like that idea. Um, Listen to me. Don't touch it. I don't know if I want to kill this thing. Maybe not. I think I'll block it like this and go with Spirit Fire. It's safer to have Thresh block Trundle as far as, like, killing Trundle is concerned. Okay. So they don't want my Thresh to level up. It's only at one right now. Stop. Okay. I'm just going to let this all happen. Let it happen. No troll chant. No. Well, that's too bad. Alright, so I'm thinking that, like, you know, we have the Grass plus the Chronomancer, and so they gotta do something about that, and so since they spend mana do, do dealing something about that, now they don't have mana to play the Ice Pillar, which is kind of nice. Um, so now Trundle turns into a 4-2, and now we can have the Rampaging bot guy fight it. That worked. All right, so remember they should have a Ledros in hand. Okay, if I play this, I have five mana left. right now see what we see. So... maybe playing that extra so I play the extra one drop to yeah get get that ephemeral here and make a better open attack but I guess this is kind of awkward with like all my mana of like sevens and four right like so like that's maybe I shouldn't have played that extra one drop to keep my seven and four available Pack like this? Is this... Oh, defeating Ledros is going to be tough. This is... Level up Thresh. So 
So that they ha they had two eight drops so far. Right? Two? Yeah, two out of four. kind of nice. That's a good one, that I can just grasp this Ledros and not have to vengeance it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, assuming that they challenge that thing. Because obviously I don't want my Thresh to die. Because it's going to attack and put it in Gnosis. I have to worry about... Um, I have to worry about Ruination, though, right? Like, I can't just, like, slam Rekindle it right here. Gotta worry about Ruination. Okay, so now I can. Okay. You will do as I command. So they got three blockers. So we'll have you attack. You attack, and then both of you put in Gnosis's. You will challenge here, you will challenge here. No, I'm not killing Lissandra. Um, yeah, I'm not killing Lissandra. Yeah, I guess that's the best I do. You think I should have Thresh challenge Ledros instead of Lissandra? Oh, what if we just... Okay, yeah, we challenge both of these. Okay, and then they, they can't block Fearsome. Okay. And I, I mean, that thing's going to block here anyway. Maybe I have that actually just challenge right here. Let's just do this. Okay, let's just do this. Let's just have... Because it's so easy to kill one... I know this thing has Fearsome, but it's so easy to kill something with one health. Where... It's much, you know, it's more difficult to kill the Undying. So now they can't block either Gnosis or the Undying. All right, we figured it out. We figured it out. Boom. Okay. Yeah, Gnosis and Noxus. We should make a Gnosis Noxus deck. Noxus Gnosis. Alright, playing some aggro. LeBlanc and Sivir. That thing's gone. These are probably just gone too. I could see keeping the Vengeance, but, you know, it's expensive. I like Caretaker v LeBlanc, but... I don't know how we're going to get that all set up. Wow, no blocks. They're willing to go to 19. That's pretty risky. Surprised they're willing to go to 19. What does he want from me? Oh. Don't attack with both. Maybe should block the 5-2 with this, but... So they, they would only block with one thing. Or, I was hoping they were going to attack with the 2-1 and they would only attack with the 5-2. Venture the stones. What are you doing? Chilling. Correct. So, slain doesn't affect ephemerals at all. So, ephemerals are not... Yeah, so ephemerals don't count. Kill. 
Sure, you want to challenge either of these? Go ahead. No, Ancient Hourglass, that card's so good. Oh, Ancient Hourglass is great. Really? That challenge can't be worth it, right? So I kill this, I draw a champion, which would hopefully be Thresh. No. I need a Thresh. Thresh. No, I need Thresh. Thresh kills LeBlanc. Really? I should have just passed turn, I guess. Whenever they did. <laughs> like how they just passed. Ugh, that thing's huge. You think Ancient Hourglass is going to hit with a mana nerf? What do you think? Possibly. It seems like they always print like amazing two mana cards. And then they get moved to three mana. Um, possibly, possibly not. I don't know. Use my mana better to play this thing right now. This is going great until the Hourglass, and then Ruin Runner, and then Bloody Business. It was all going great before those cards. Thanks, Thrash. A little late now. Hmm, favorite level ups. There's a lot of great ones. Like the Talia one is really cool. Um The Gnosis one's pretty cool. What else we have? Kindred has a cool one. Lissandra's is really good. I don't know if there's any bad ones. They do such a great job with the level ups. No Rennington's? We need to stop having that card. So we can turn this into a 3-4. I it would be really nice to have one more mana for that right negation. Keep my Thresh alive. And, you know, Spell Shield means I don't get to, like, Spirit's Journey. Their stuff. Down to This ain't great. To us. Okay. All right, a little slow for the aggro deck there, and um, yeah, like those those things hit super hard, and and it just couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't like have like the one turn I needed to like you know get like a. a uh, Bakai or Thresh or something, you know, I, I needed one turn to be able to like play stuff and then start having right negation. They had all, you know, like that really good removal is really all about that hourglass, too. That hourglass completely changed the game for sure. So great hourglass there and then great removal afterwards. Um, that, uh, this 6 4 with the removal spells is, is really nice, right? Like having like Ruin Runner, I guess, besides the hour, I mean, really Ruin Runner won that game. Right, like kind of by itself, right? Because like Ruin Runner with Spell Shield, you can't kill it. It's you know you can't like really affect it. It's got a lot of power, so it gets to just do all like the fight, the one-sided fight spells, and it, you're just safe because of that Spell Shield. That's really nice. So that's a cool combination. But anyway, our deck was pretty awesome. Looked really good against Lissandra Trundle, 
in particular, like this. So like the slower decks that take a long, you know, like your slower decks, it looks like we can out grind them. Um, or really like having ride of negation in like this kind of deck. This card was perfect for those matchups. And then, you know, we have the undying that uh, could keep on coming back. The undying plus spirit leech was really good card advantage or glimpse beyond. And then ride of negation to stop stuff was really nice. Um, I, I didn't like the spirit journey. It looked really, really slow. It, um, and, and that's the thing is like, we have some cards that I think are probably too slow. Like, I think we probably need to get like some better cards against aggro. I think like the spirit journey, maybe like a withering whale or, um, you know, something like that. Spear, spear fire did, did really good. That was a card that performed very, very well. Um, so yeah, can't, can't complain about spirit fire. Um, ether fiend was kind of slow also. Um, so I kind of spirit journey, ether fiend were probably my two least favorite cards in the deck. Um, this thing was okay, but there are sometimes like if we didn't, if we weren't, you know, like if you're not able to turn this on, it looks kind of silly. But even even when we did, the four six wasn't necessarily always killing all the champions that we need to. It was okay, but it wasn't it wasn't amazing with playing like Thresh already at five and Nasus already at six. I could see getting rid of this card also. I could see all all three of these Bakai Spirit Journey Ether Fiend all being more. Um, you know, one, two, three, four mana cards or like withering whales, um, things like that. Think all things that uh will be a little bit better against aggro. I liked the chronomancer, that was good, so I could see playing another chronomancer. Um, yes, like chronomancer, doom beast, but like I don't know, I don't really know exactly, like, what's the plan. What's the plan against Ruin Runner, right? Like, Ruin Runner is, is really, really popular. What's, like, the real plan against this card? Like, because, like, they play Ruin Runner and then just play, like, those removal spells. Like, that's a, that's a pretty popular thing that people are doing right now. What's really the good plan for a deck, for a slower deck like this against that card? I'm not sure. I don't have, like, the, uh, I don't have, like, the, the best answer to that. But, um, I think that's, that's, like, the thing to try to figure out with these kind of decks right now. It's like, what do we do against Ruin Runner? Um, yeah, that's that's something to figure out. Probably, like, step one is, like, finding really cheap ways to get rid of the spell shield. And so maybe that's, like, Withering Whale type stuff. You know, like, your Withering Whale, Unspeakable Horror, Vile Feast, like, that kind of stuff. Like, get you know, maybe that's step one. It's, like, finding cheap ways to get rid of spell shield. But, um, anyway... Really cool stuff here with the Thresh Gnosis. I think that's that's kind of where I'd look for as far as upgrading the deck is maybe finding what what cards should we play instead of Ether Fiend Spirit Journey and Rampaging of Bakai that are super impactful. Um, you know, I would probably keep the Bakai for now. I'd probably look for something else instead of the Journey and the Ether Fiend. So if you're playing this later, um, you got ideas, anything you really like, anything you want to play, feel free to give it a try. Um, but I liked our I liked our list. I liked the um, I liked a lot of stuff that we had going on here. All right, but that's it here for Thresh Gnosis. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.